All right. Hello, AP Psych. So today is a much better day. So you won't hear me on the brink of tears in a delusional state. So today we are starting review. Can you believe it? That is insanity. We are in review, which is just the wildest, craziest thing. I'm so excited. We are going to be using our Barron's books, which I know some of you are just the most excited. I see you, Emerson. I see you. So I know we are excited about it, and so am I. So there's a couple things I do want to talk about, just get some procedures out there and just make sure everyone's kind of on the same page to make sure we can make this transition as successful as possible. Um, I am still in my nursery, but I have a whole setup. I have a table now. I got my little Elmo ready to go. I am. I got a little cup with highlighters and and my favorite pens. I got my crayons because, you know, I teach AP World and we use them. Like, I got my little post-it notes ready to go. I feel like I got my own little classroom set up here. I got everything I need over here. Whew. We are ready to make some moves. So, um, if you can open Edsby, I would open Edsby. If you can't open Edsby, don't worry about it. Like, do not stress yourselves out about it. It is not worth stressing about because um, I'm going to show you everything you need anyway. But if you can't open Edsby, I would. Uh, so, yesterday on Edsby, I posted uh, 10,000 times. But one of the things I was posting yesterday was essentially a breakdown of your assignments for the week, which I want to make sure everyone's kind of clear and everyone kind of knows exactly what's going on. So the most important thing I posted yesterday, which definitely got buried, is way down here <laughs> um, at the very bottom where it says APP Week 29 Digital Review. If you can't open it, click in it click on it. If you can't, it's not a big deal. I'm literally opening it right now for you, so don't stress about it. So every single week, I'm going to be posting one of these essential, essentially, it's just a, your day-by-day -day instruction so that there's no question about what is due, when, how things are, what we're going to be doing. Um, so that way you know exactly what's happening. I just thought this would make things significantly easier for you and way less unpredictability because at this point, every morning I wake up and I, I check the news and I'm like, oh God, what terrible thing happened yesterday <laughs> or while I was sleeping. So I feel like if we can kind of control some things, then we're going to tolerate the things we cannot control a little bit better because I'm a crazy person and that's who I am. So I posted this yesterday. You definitely want to have it. Uh, you don't need to print it, I don't think, but I would definitely have it at your disposal. Uh, so we're in AP Psych, obviously review week one. This week, you have a test on Thursday. Now, you did pick up a scope and sequence um, at school uh, before we left for the virus. Um, if you remember, if you have it, uh, if you have it available, you can pull it out. If you don't, I'm going to pull it up here in two seconds. Uh, it is still accurate. It's just not perfectly accurate because things have changed. I don't know if you've noticed, but the world's a little bit different. So because of that, we've had to make a little bit of adjustments to it. So I'm pulling it up here in just a second, I swear, so you can actually see it. Um, so I posted, I gave this to you before we left for break, uh, for uh, before we left school, and it is your scope and sequence for all of the review. So this goes all the way to week 35. What I was just showing you is only week one day by day, just to make it a little bit easier for you to process. Now, one thing that is important for you to know when you're looking at this one, which you should have a printed copy of, is that your days have changed over here because I'm now testing on Wednesdays. So we're just gonna keep the Wednesday schedule going a testing on Wednesdays and a new week starts on Thursday. So I was going to try shifting everything back a little bit, um, but we're just going to kind of adjust. So when it says Monday, it really means Friday now. No, it doesn't. That's a lie. It means Thursday, Friday, Monday, 
Tuesday. So that is your new rotation, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, and that's consistent throughout all of these. Now keep in mind, if you look at what I just showed you, I've already realigned it to match. So if you look at what is in Edsby, you know, Thursday, day one, week one, Friday, week two. So it's essentially taking what you've already had uh, and just kind of adjusting it slightly. So I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page so everyone knows. So this and the big one that you've already received on paper work together. There's just a slight change in the days, but they still work together. And this just explains exactly what we're doing day by day. Thumbs up if we're good. You understand the small changes? Okay. So going back to that one on Edsby, which you should all definitely download. You definitely don't need to print or anything, but you should definitely download and have it on your desktop is um, this week's stuff. And on Wednesday, I'll post next week and we'll have one for every single week going forward. So today is Thursday, day one. You have a vocab quiz today. It's on week one content. So how is that test going to look like? What, uh, I'm pulling it up right now. What that test is going to look like is you just open your vocab packet. And once you open your vocab packet, you go to week one and you're only doing a vocab quiz for the first 10 words. That's it. So when it says week one, it's not all 30, pay all 30 words from week one. It is literally just the um, it is literally just the first 10 words of that vocab packet. So today's vocab quiz, which is on week one, is literally only these words. Then your vocab quiz tomorrow on Friday, which is very clearly says week two, it is these 10 words. So when it says for Monday, week three, it is these 10 words. So it's only the first 10 words of each week. That's it. It is not 30 words. Oh my God, we would all die and that would be miserable. And I've already taught you that you can't retain that much content. So it would be stupid to test you on that content. So everyone okay about the test? Thumbs up. Uh, about the quizzes, I mean. Thumbs up. Everyone okay? Perfect. All right. So with that being said, that's how your vocab quizzes are going to be for the rest of your AP Psych existence. With that being said, you have one due today. I already have like three or four kids who've already taken it, which is pretty exciting. So that does make me happy. Um, so you have one for today, one tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday. And then, of course, on Wednesday, you will be then taking um, a test on content. So we're getting right to it today. How exciting. All right. So vocab quizzes covered. Everyone says they're feeling pretty good about it, which is awesome to hear. That's exactly the format. First 10 words of the week. Next thing that I would like to address is what your actual AP exam is going to look like. So in case you didn't hear, on the 25th, they announced that your AP exam was going to be home. Now you don't have to write this. I am, I just have to, to make sure I cover everything I need to. So when we talk about the new AP exam, I just want to make sure everyone is on the same exact page. Now keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, I'm doing this so you can ask me questions. So at any time you need to be asking me questions, unmute yourself so I can hear you. And please, 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 please ask me questions because if I'm just going to, Talk to myself. I can do this without having 22 kids look at me. <laughs> so the new AP exam um, is going to be uh, done uh, digitally. It is being done digitally. So what does that mean? Okay. So when we're talking about the new digital exam, um, it is going to be officially announced on April 3rd. So all of our official announcement is happening on April 3rd. 
So all of this that I'm telling you is coming from some official information and some kind of guesstimation by me and other AP Psych teachers about what is actually happening because we don't really 100% know because today is March 26th and they're not officially telling us anything until April 3rd and that's a huge amount of time to wait and so we kind of have to make some kind of decisions to go. But there are a few things that we actually do know. And a few of those things are, is that it's only going to be 45 minutes long, okay? So your whole test is 45 minutes at home, okay? And it's going to be done digitally. Now, seeing that, you probably have like 10,000 questions about how that's actually going to be done. Like, are you all taking it at the same time? Are you getting assigned different times? I have no idea. They don't have an idea, which is why they've waited until April 3rd to come up with that. So I can't really tell you about what is happening on that front. I can't tell you if it's going to, how it's going to work or anything like that because I have no idea. So I have 10,000 questions. You probably have 10,000 questions. But there are a couple things that we do know. First and foremost, the test is limited. Okay, now the test is being limited, and that is a big deal. There's three ways the test has been changed. The first way it's been changed, it is only essays. It is only essays. Okay, so that means you're going to have FRQs. Now, you typically have two FRQs, and if you remember, your FRQs look like this, okay? They're pretty long, you have multiple components to them, stuff like that, we've practiced them before. We're gonna obviously do a lot more of them because that's the entire essay. The entire exam is essays. It's gonna be FRQs. If I had to guess, I'd still keep it two, but it could be three, but I don't really think so. I think they're just gonna keep it two because on the actual AP exam for AP Psych, you have two FRQs and 50 minutes, so I would say they'd probably keep it two FRQs. If I, I mean, does that make logical sense? Like, it's pretty similar to the timing. So it's only going, yes. Who, uh, Diana, what's up? Well, no, it's 50 minutes to write both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you get the instructions, you have 50 min uh, minutes to answer both. So it's 50 minutes to answer. So maybe they will just delete like the C section of one and just kind of cut it back a little bit. So um, that's what I would think. I will tell you, the people who manage AP psychology at College Board are actually like intelligent, logical people that make logical, sound decisions. The people who are in charge of AP World have no idea what they're doing. And they just like smash around and are completely inconsistent. So with that being said, whatever comes out for AP Psych, I really do think it's going to be logical and nowhere unexpected. So I'm not really panicking about what your exam is going to look like because I really do have faith that these people aren't morons. So I don't have that faith in AP World, but I do in AP Psych. So why are they doing just essays? Because it makes it harder to cheat. It makes it harder to cheat. If you have multiple choice, you can, you know, easily uh, manipulate, and that's why. It also allows for a variety of answers. Um, and that's the biggest thing, which is why College Board is going ahead with just doing writing. If they did a specific question, you either were taught that content or you weren't taught that content. Um, with the fact that how digital learning is going for most people and how most people aren't finished with content. Um, we are. We're in review right now, which is insanity. Um, and so many of the, our, so many other people taking AP, World, AP Psych aren't. Uh, and that's why, is that they wanted to give them a variety of opportunities in order to show what they have actually learned. So that's why they're doing it. Another way the test is going to be limited, as far as I know, and these are pretty concrete things. Keep in mind, when AP announced that they're changing their exam, they gave, sent me the same email you got. <laughs> so it's not like I got an inside scoop and you guys didn't. 
I got the same exact email you did, which is infuriating because you people got the email and was like, oh no, what does this mean? And I got the email and said, oh no, what does this mean <laughs> as well? So um, yeah, not great, but here we are. Uh, so another way the test is being limited is by content. Okay, they're literally cutting back what type of content is on it. Now, you don't really know this, and that's fine, because honestly, I had to figure it out myself, because <laughs> I don't teach it this way, is that in AP Psych, you currently have 1 through 10 units. Okay? They are cutting. They cut units 9 and 10. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, let me tell you. What that actually means, and let me show you on our scope and sequence, they have cut treatment of disorders in psychology. Guess what we are super prepared for? Both treatments of disorders and social psychology. So they've officially cut it on the exam. Now, I'm still going to continue moving forward with the review. We're going to go over treatment and disorders and social psychology. We're going to spend a week on that. Why? Because you can still use that information in your essays. So as long uh, in your FRQs that they're going to have you write, they're not going to ask you a question on treatment or social psychology, but you can use it to answer the questions. They can't take those points away from you because you know the answers. Does that make sense? They're just not actively going to ask you questions, but they could say, you know, what is, for instance, just pulling this FRQ back out, you know, um, if you describe, of course, none of these are exactly what I'm looking for, uh, but you can use that information on the exam and they have to technically score it because you're not wrong. But they just won't have a question entirely based on social psychology or an entire question based on treatment of disorders. So that's how they're limiting the test is they're cutting off those two units, which means everything else that we have uh, covered is on the exam. So we definitely need to get to review for that. So the other thing that you should be aware is submission. And they haven't been expl explicitly clear on how this is going to work, but they, I do think it is something that you should be aware of. So they've said they're going to accept two different ways to do it, that you can write it out, write out by hand your exam. And then I would assume they would have you take a picture of it and then submit it, or they're gonna have you type it in. I think you, as the student, get to choose how you're going to do it. Um, keep in mind, I don't know anything official until April 3rd, but they have made reference to this, and Trevor Packer, who's like the AP guy, has said that they will accept both handwritten and typed. Now, the problem is with the typed, is it going to be their program? which may not have like word processing or like spell check and all that stuff, or is it going to be a word document? So I don't really know. So when we talk about submission, you can write it out by hand or you can do it by typing. Uh, they haven't, they've said that you could do either or they haven't given us any details. Is it their own personal program they're doing or can you just type it in a word document and submit it to them? I have no idea, so please don't ask me that question yet. April 3rd, I hope that I'll be able to answer that question wholeheartedly for you, but as of right now, I am not quite sure. So that is as much as I know about what your test is going to look like. Uh, with that being said, because of the schedule that we've been keeping all year, I really do feel like we're in a good spot to be incredibly successful. Uh, and because of that, we're going to keep kind of moving forward and keep kind of charging through. So the test format is what I just described to the best of my ability right back there. Uh, but anything can change really because nothing's official until April 3rd. So everyone okay with what the test looks like? So knowing that your entire test is based on FRQs, Guess what we'll be writing more of? FRQs. So um, I'm not trying to do a ton of them, but we need to make sure that we understand our format. Diana, where are we going? I can't hear you, my love. My dog ran out, so I have to let him 
So, um, but that is the, what the plan is for the new AP exam. All right. I do want to just pull your attention back to something I've already kind of discussed, but I want to make sure we are all in the right spot. Let me, I'm going back to your AP psych, uh, week 29 assignments, just so you can see them. And so you just have some clarity on exactly what is expected. So on your EDSBI, this is where this was found. I know you can't see what I'm trying to look at, but I'm really trying to pull it up. Um, this is what I was trying to get. So with that being said, so today is Thursday. You have vocab quiz week one. So today we did go over the testing schedule. Um, I am eventually going to start doing, <coughs> excuse me, reviewing history and approaches. But now I want to go over your Barron's book. So your Barron's book, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be due on Wednesdays by midnight. So your Barron's book is due Wednesdays by midnight. How are you going to submit it? You have two options, which is just the best. So how are you going to submit it? You have two options. You can either make a video of you flipping the pages of your Barron's book and send it to me via Edsby, or you can send it to me via Instagram. If there's another platform, I'm just not comfortable with TikTok. I just, I think I'm too old and I just can't figure it out. Like, I just think I'm too dumb to do it. You know what I mean? I really think I'm too dumb to do it. So with that being said, if you're really passionate about TikTok, I guess I could try figuring it out. Do you want me to figure out TikTok to do it? Would it be easier? No? Okay, good. Thank you. Um, what, Rex? <laughs> okay, so are we comfortable with just sending me a private message on Instagram or Edsby of a video? Is that okay with you? Is that thumbs up? Okay, perfect. So you can choose either of those. Um, it would be better than taking 10,000 photos. Can we agree? So I think doing um, just a video of you showing me, and I'll have an example of one coming up on Tuesday for you so you know exactly what the video should look like. Everyone okay with that? So that's how we're going to submit um, our Barron's books. They're worth 150 points. You will not pass this class if you do not do your Barron's book. You will not pass this class if you do not do your Barron's book. And they are due every Wednesday at midnight, by midnight. You can obviously turn them in early, but they are due on midnight, by midnight. With that being said, let me explain what the Barron's book actually entitles and what you're going to be doing with it. Okay, so everyone should have a Barron's book. I'm not even going to ask you to show it to me because I don't want to be disappointed. Oh, I see you, Rex. I see you. I'm so proud. So with that being said, everyone should have their Barron's books. Don't show me if you don't have it. I just don't want to know. My heart will be broken. Um, it's fine. It's fine. It's the end of the world. It's fine. So with that being said, everyone should have their Barron's book out in front of you so you can um, see everything that I'm doing and you can kind of follow along with it. So your Barron's book, if you look at your little schedule, it says you are responsible for pages 47 through 98 on your scope and sequence. So whether you're on the short one for this week that goes day by day, or if you're looking at the big one like I am that covers for the whole review, you're responsible for pages 47 through 98. So let's open our book to pages 47. And this is what page 47 looks like. Now, I did ask that all of you buy the same version. If your book does not is not the um, ninth edition, then you're gonna have to kind of figure out your own pages at this point. But it should be starting with history and approaches, which is what the major topic of 
one of the major topics this week is. So what are the major topics of this week? It is history and approaches, research methods, and biology. And those are all covered between pages 47 and 98. Now, if things were normal, which we obviously know they're not, hence I'm sitting in my room, in my nursery. I've got a now table set up in a nursery, which just is weird anyway. Um, I understand things are not normal. Things are not consistent. Uh, if we were at school right now, I'd be handing all of you a lovely two-pack of highlighters. And I'd be giving them to you. And I would have a box in the front of my room. So whenever you ran out of a highlighter, you would get your own and help yourself. Because I have tons and tons and tons of highlighters sitting in my classroom currently doing nothing at the moment. Now, because I don't know how much access you have to other things, and I'm not here to tell you what you can and can't use, if you have a highlighter, I would grab a highlighter. And I would use a highlighter for your Barron's book. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. I am also more than happy to accept crayons, color pencils, or even underlining. I would prefer if you didn't underline, because I think that gets really chaotic and really messy. Um, but worst case, if you have to, you are more than welcome to underline. Is everyone clear on how I would, of course, prefer everyone to have a highlighter because I have highlighters for you. They're literally sitting in my classroom. <laughs> I have buckets and buckets of them, um, that I would give them for free to you. But, um, if you don't have a highlighter, you can use crayons, you can use colored pencils, you can use anything you'd like. I would prefer you don't underline, but you do you. So what are you supposed to be doing in your Barron's book as you go forward? So as you know, you are responsible and is due Wednesday by midnight, pages 47 through 98. So what happens is, is you're going to open up to page 47 and you are going to begin reading. History of psychology. One way to think about the history of psychology is to organize the various theorists and theories into waves or schools of thought. Each wave is a way of thinking about human thought and behavior that has dominated the field for a certain period of time until a new way of looking at psychology is started to dominate the field. So it is each wave. So I'm going to highlight the most important information. Okay. And then I'm going to make a quick note. So at the on this column of my thing, so waves of, of psych, as you can see, I'm abbreviating. They are it's about human thought and behavior. And it comes with new ideas equal new theories. If you have questions at any time, please feel free to just shout out and ask me questions because the whole reason why we're doing a Zoom meeting is so you can ask me questions. So at any time, please feel free to ask. Um, that's why I'm here. <laughs> okay, so I don't care about the pen or pencil. I'm a pen person. I hate pencils more than anything in the whole wide world. So um, I would never use a pencil, but if you want to use a pencil, that's perfectly fine. But keep in mind, you are sending me a video, and I have to be able to see it. <laughs> when you show me a video of you uh, flipping through your Barron's book on Wednesday, I need to be able to kind of see it. So if you're writing dark in pencil, it's perfectly fine. Because keep in mind, depending on the quality of your video that you were recording to send me, will dictate how many points you get out of the 150. Does that work for you, Catherine? Perfect. So... That's what I'm looking for. I'll do the rest of the page, but I mean, I, I'm not looking for tons and tons. So wave one, introspection. So I'm going to highlight introspection. I'm going to write introspection over here. Okay, so wave one is introspection. Archaeologists and historians find evidence that humans have always thought about our thoughts and behavior. So in a way, the study of psychology is old as our species. Archaeologists find new evidence of whatever. Stone, uh, stone age humans carving holes through the skull to release evil spirits. Greek philosophers such as Plato, Democritus, uh, theorized about the relationship between thought and behavior. However, thinking about psychology is different than studying it scientifically. Many psychologists specialize in the theory of science, 
date the beginning of scientific, uh, scientific psychology at the year of 1789. So introspection, I'm going to write 1780, 1879. Okay, so date the beginning. I'm only going to highlight the information I have to. So date the beginning in 1879. The year William wounded. So William wounded is your first. Okay. First lab atory. Okay. So that year, William Wounded set up the first psychological laboratory. There you go. Okay. So as you can see, I'm not asking you to rewrite the book. Do not rewrite the book. The book has been written. Do not fill the columns with ten, all of the same exact words over here. It's supposed to be shorthand. In all of your textbooks, you will see that they have space on the side. The reason why they have space on the side is because you're supposed to take notes in the columns. That's the whole point. You are taking notes in the column. You are not rewriting the book. Is everyone clear on that? Thumbs up? Everyone's okay? All right. So your responsibility for your Barron's book is to mark up the text with comments and highlight important information. Now, I'm not going to be a stickler on highlighting. If you don't have a highlighter, you don't have enough highlighters, whatever, I'll accept anything. I'd prefer if you didn't out underline, but if you have to underline, then do what you got to do. Now, it also says all tests must be taken with your corrections and why your selection was wrong. Tests can be taken in the book but must have answers and corrections clearly seen. Okay, so what that means is if you flip to the end of the section, which is history and perspectives, you'll see that you have practice questions. Which, keep in mind, if you were taking a full AP exam, this would be wonderful because they're actually really great thoughtful questions. Now, I know that you are not taking a multiple choice test. I know that. I am aware. It just got changed last week and I am currently dealing with this. With that being said, we're still going to practice multiple choice questioning because A, it's a way to make sure you're forcing yourself into learning the content. And let's be honest, by taking my multiple choice questions every single week, you've become much better at your content. Wouldn't we agree? So we're still going to be using these multiple choice questions because it's going to force us to see what content we know and what content we don't know. So yes, I know, do not come at me and say, Miss Bennett, we don't have FRQs. Do you want to write FRQs instead of take a multiple choice test? Is that how you want to test? No, no one wants to do that. So we're still going to take a weekly test, 35 questions, all AP. Um, you're still going to do the multiple choice questions in your book because it'll show you what you do and do not know. So what am I expecting in this part of your book? I am expecting for you to read the questions and answer the questions. So I haven't read question one, but I'm going to say the answer is A. So if you turn the page, you will see that the answer is actually C. So I got question one wrong. So I'm going to cross out C, A. I'm going to circle C and I'm going to make a note. Didn't, <laughs> you're not going to write this, but you're going to say why you got the question wrong and why the answer is correct. You're just making a quick little note. It doesn't need to be uh, long. Question thoroughly. Rushed. Okay, so that's why I got the question wrong. So you're going to take all of the practice questions in the book in the section you're responsible for. If you get it right, then you just move on and you're perfectly fine. If you get it wrong, you're going to acknowledge you got it wrong and you're going to tell me why you got it wrong. The reason why we do this is not to like waste your time and make you want to punch yourself in the face. The reason why we do it is because you need to consciously know what you know and what you don't know. Everything is being written in this book. You don't need to have it anywhere else. You don't need a separate sheet of paper. You're just going to simply write the answers and whatever you need in the columns. Now, if you were so lucky to have me for AP World, hey, I see you, Sophia. I see you, Bernstein. Okay. Um, Grace Mary, of course. Rex is already dying inside because you know how much this is going to suck. Um, 
if you've done this for AP World, I hope that you already see that this is significantly easier than the shit you had to deal with. Can we agree? The fact that there's even multiple choice questions is just amazing. And they also have all the answers explained for you. And that is a huge deal, especially for some of you who have really struggled in, every single one of you has struggled in some section of this class, for sure. Um, whether it was cognition, motivation and emotion, uh, disorders, whatever it is. They also have all the answers explained for you to really help you understand what you're getting wrong and why. You have to understand at this point, you have to take ownership for what you do and don't know. Now, I am not going to tell you that you're going to love doing a Baron's book because you're not. <laughs> I will tell you, it will be a nice way to fill your time. Isn't that exciting? With all this quarantine, you have nothing but time. I'm just kidding. I know you have other things going on and real life stress. And believe me, I'm, I'm no assumption that you're just sitting around just have nothing going on. But this will take time and it is going to take you longer than you think. It is going to take you longer than you think. For sure. So please make sure. So just to review, you are responsible for pages. Let me pull it up so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, you are responsible for pages 47 through 98. It is due by midnight Wednesday. Okay, so it is due by midnight Wednesday. So you have all of these pages, which means you are highlighting the text of the most important stuff and then you are just writing quick shorthand notes in the column. Then you're going to do all of the pages, including the vocab, the quizzes, the practice questions in the book. If you get them wrong, you need to acknowledge you got it wrong, circle the correct answer, and tell me why you got it wrong. Nothing crazy, but you have to acknowledge what you do and don't know. And you're going all the way to page 98, which is way over here. And that takes you through biological basis of behavior. Okay, so you, when you get to states of consciousness, then you stop. Okay, so everyone have an understanding. Keep in mind it's on your big Baron, uh, your big review sheet. Everyone okay about Baron's book? Okay, so we're feeling okay. I mean, no one's excited about it. That makes sense. I'm perfectly fine with that. My self-esteem can take it, but it is a very big deal. I hope, are we happy that we're at least in review? I mean, aren't you glad we hustled all year to get to review? Wouldn't it have been awful if we were learning content still with all of this going on? So, uh, I mean, we are in review, which I think we can all be kind of like uh, excited about. So, there you go, guys. That is your Barron's book. That is everything kind of going on for this week. Um, keep in mind, you do have an independent schedule. So as you look at this that I posted on Edsby yesterday for APP Review Week 1, your test on Wednesday is on history and approaches, research methods, and biology. Um, you will see that today we are doing a Zoom meeting and I'm going to start history and approaches here for the last like 20 minutes of class. You should be working on pages 47 through 98 in your text. As you can see, here are the requirements for that textbook. Tomorrow, uh, so today you have vocab quiz week one. Tomorrow is Friday, day two. You have week two vocab. I'm doing research tomorrow. Okay. Madison, what's up? Yes, you do, because you got it at the end. It's all first semester work, girl. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You already have it. You already have it at home. You should, because if you look at your stuff, darling, you have all of this stuff. I've already taught you all of this stuff. So if you look at your binder from week one, two, three, four, and five, if you look at the top of the sheet, I've already covered where all of this content is found. So while you're reviewing for my test, you should be reviewing 
all of your week one, week two, week three, week four, and week five stuff. And you're going to see in class, in my Zoom videos, I'm going to be pulling out some of this stuff, especially in biology. You're going to see <laughs> a bunch of your diagrams from week three when we covered uh, re uh, biology. You're going to see a bunch of diagrams I'm going to have in class that, we, that you should. So when you are... Oh, tomorrow, for instance, when we're doing research, you should have your AP Psych Binder from first semester out, and I'm going to be going through it. And you should be using your focus, your study guide, your outlines, and all of your handouts to do and study for this content, for sure, absolutely, which is exactly why I have them listed at the top. You should be using the resources that you have. So hopefully you see that everything we've been doing is kind of coming together and uh, into one big thing. So, everyone okay? Yes, what do you got? You're just taking notes, and that's what it should have been for AP World as well. AP World's book is just denser. That's the problem. AP World's book, and if you look... <laughs> I can pull out AP Worlds here in a second. You can see how dense that sucker is in comparison to yours. AP Psych is way more conversational, while AP World is just super dense on content. So there's going to be less note-taking in AP Psych than there is in AP World because there's no comparison between the two. <laughs> Does that help, Camden? Okay, perfect. All right. Sure, what's up? So your textbook was probably going to die with me anyway, because keep in mind, we're the only uh, class using that textbook, correct? So everyone else has the other textbook. Um, and those textbooks were in rough shape when you inherited them, so they were probably going to die with me anyway this year. So I'm not worried about them. You're not worried about them. It is what it is. And I would keep them around because they're super helpful. Um, like not after this year, like I am in no way thinking you're going to take them to college or some shit like that, but, uh, I would keep them around until you take your AP exam. And then if you'd like to burn it, you can, I'm not personally offended, but that book is a good book. I wouldn't burn that book. You can burn your Baron's book cause you're going to hate that, but don't burn your textbook cause it's a good book and it has a fish on the front. It's friendly. It's friendly. So, all right. So. Uh, keep your parents, but I would keep your textbook until at least the exam. And then after that, you can do what you want with it. All right. I'm going to start covering like I'm supposed to history and approaches. Um, if you have your first semester content, I would pull it out and have your focus or your study guide out. I am not looking for you to have like a notes that you're specifically taking, like, when I'm going over this content, I'm not expecting you to be taking diligent notes on what I'm sharing. My thing is, is that you should have your focus in your study guide or maybe even your outline that you've already completed. And you should just be making notes in the columns to it and maybe adding some information, maybe highlighting some stuff that you're like, I have no retention of this. You're just acknowledging when I'm going over stuff, you're just here to really acknowledge what you do and what you don't know and then taking responsibility for it. That's it. So when I start going over, like tomorrow I'm doing research, I'm going to have you probably take out one of my review packets that I gave you, and I'm going to tell you all of this tomorrow, of course. But you're not sitting there and taking diligent handwritten notes because, A, that's not how AP Psych has been taught to you. Can we agree? And you've already done the work, ladies and gentlemen. We've already gone through this content. So we're just recognizing what we do and what we don't know and covering some big topics. That's it. That's it. So we're not looking for um, a completely relearning of this content. It's mostly just to kind of hear the information again. And if you have a question, I'm here to answer it. But it is not... Like, oh, wow, you need to take diligent notes on this or you're not going to pass the exam. You already have this content done. But let's look at some of this stuff. So let's do it. Um, sure, what do you got?
Yep, that's it. That's it. And then tomorrow you have week two due, and that's just the first 10 words. Every time it says a week, you're just doing the first 10 words. If, yep, that's it. Just the first 10 words. So for, for the whole review, every time it says just a week, it's only the first 10 words. Yeah, no, it's never going to be 30 words. That would be so mean. And could you imagine how long it would take me to make those quizzes? Oh, my God. It already takes me about 20 minutes to make a quiz. Oh, my God. That would be death if I had to do 30. It's just always, always, always the first 10 words. Alexis, is that okay with you? All right, perfect. All right, so... Um, as you can see, I already have everything perfectly made. So here is history and approaches and research all consolidated into one PowerPoint. Are you proud? Oh. What do you got? No, you're fine. I was just trying to show you how, how organized I am and you don't seem to care at Camden Collins. It's fine. What? Don't suck up to me now. <laughs> Yeah. So, 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 let's just get to it. Let's be real. No, I know. Because, well, it's a great question and one that I, I don't want to stop teaching because then I stop getting paid. And... <laughs> And I don't know if you know, but times right now are tough for everyone, and there's a lot going on. Oh, Grace Mary's got a dog and a kid in the background, a brother's a brother in the background. You got a lot going on, girl. Um, so I am planning on teaching as long as I possibly, possibly can. When Hank does arrive, I am planning to maybe post just videos of me teaching content and not doing Zoom, and then as soon as I can, come back to doing Zoom. What are our thoughts on that? I agree. So um, there will be maybe a day that I have a Zoom video, a Zoom meeting, and the meeting is never occurs, and there's just a video posted on plant lectures. Then I think you should connect the dots. But don't report me. <laughs> <laughs> don't report me, but that's probably what's going to happen. And then a couple days later, I'll like post more. I'll be every day. I'll be posting videos and stuff, but I just, um, the whole responsibility every teacher in Hillsborough County is supposed to be doing is posting instruction, maintaining grades and interacting with students. So if I'm capable of doing all three of those things, then why shouldn't I continue, right? So I hope that doesn't offend you. I've already started recording videos three weeks in advance so I can have them ready to go. I mean, I am taking this incredibly seriously. I'm not just trying to do a money grab. I hope you know that. Um, but if I don't have to take time off and not get paid, that would be the best. So there'll come a time where Samantha Bennett goes dark. Be kind. Keep doing because I already have um, quizzes and stuff and tests will be posted. So just follow along with the timeline supposed to be and there'll be videos posted for you of me just sitting in my living room recording it with no one around. But I'm going to try to keep up on it as much as I possibly can. So we're going to be as consistent as we can. It's just not going to be me hosting Zoom videos and answering your questions. Is that okay? Okay, because, like, I'm really trying, and the less that, um, the more I can do ahead of time, the better, and the fact that I'm sitting down practically all day is helpful, so I'm trying to keep Hank in there as long as possible, and because it's a scary-ass world out there right now, okay, <laughs> and your girl's on house arrest. I'm not allowed to leave. I can't leave my house. I'm not allowed to go anywhere except to the hospital, and McCray can't come to the hospital with me, by the way. Can't come. So um, for delivery at the moment, he might be able to be in the room. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this house, and there's a lot of stress. So there's, like, a lot of things happening on my side because eight and a half months pregnant with a pandemic occurring is not ideal. 
But we're not here to talk about that. The other questions were, uh, were fair and definitely affect you, but um, know that there's a lot happening in my life, just like there's a lot happening in your lives. Can we agree? Each of you are dealing with tons of stuff. Some of you aren't even in the country, for God's sake. Some of you are all over the place, and I keep getting messages. I'm stuck in this country. I'm stuck in that country. So, like, hot damn. We all have our problems. All right. Here we go, because I've got 10 minutes, and then we're done in 10 minutes, because I know my girl Olivia is watching that clock. I see you, Olivia. <laughs> All right. So, um, so uh, history and approaches. So let's start with the review. Um, all of this is going to be on your test on Wednesday. You will have a 35-question test, all, P all AP style. It's going to be in the exact same format. I'm going to post a picture of the test. And then question one will have A, B, C, D. You'll look at the questions. Um, that went pretty well yesterday, right? Hello? Okay, it worked pretty well. I know. I can only imagine how much you all cheated, and I don't want to know. And I don't want to know. And I don't want to know. And I don't want to know because my heart will be broken. Um, but that is the format going forward. I'll send you a picture. Keep in mind, that test still took me like three hours to make. So it may have looked like I took the cheat, uh, cheat road. That took, shit took forever. So, um, but that's exactly what your test is going to look like, except it'll be 35 questions. All multiple choice. You'll get a picture of the test, a uh, picture of the questions, and then you'll bubble in question one, question two, question three. All right, so uh, just to make sure you know where exactly all of this is going. All right, so history and approaches. Let's do it. Why isn't this show? Okay. So when we talk about history and approaches, I don't want to be in that mode. Um, we're talking about the basic foundations of psychology. This is all of your week one stuff. You just need to know the basics of psychology is about behavior and the mental processes. Um, that's what psychology is focusing in on. When we talk about psychology, we're looking at the science of behavior. So the science of how we do things. It's not just like, oh, I wonder why. It's looking at the foundation of it. So the first branch of psychology is structuralism. On your, in your notes or on a separate sheet of paper I gave you in week one, we did a nice little flow chart of all of your branches. Does anyone have that? Yes, thumbs up. Okay, I will have it for in front of me tomorrow, but we did a really lovely flow chart that would be pretty helpful for you to have now. I'll have it for you tomorrow. I just don't have my binder up. Uh, I know, what a slacker. But tomorrow I'll have all of my assignments because we're going to spend the whole time doing instruction, not kind of going over the week and stuff like that. So with that being said, if you have it, it'll be super helpful and I'll show it to you tomorrow so you can take a photo of the screen tomorrow. But first branch is structuralism. It's based on Woundit. Uh, Woundit student is Titchener, of course. We remember him. Titchener is going to bring it to America. Um, every time we talk about structuralism, we're talking about introspection, about how um, thinking about our own thinking is what structure, uh, is what introspection is. Uh, and Margaret Washburn is going to be the first female in psychology. So under structuralism, we have Wounded, Titchener, and Washburn. So structuralism is just how we think about the mind and how we think it works. The second branch of psychology is called functionalism. And it is looking at how the mind allows people to adapt, live, and work. So functionalism, like this term, is looking at why the brain works the way it does. And it's all about William James. And he's the major founder of it. Okay, um, And he is going to, from functionalism, that's how we have all of our other subunits. So the first one is structuralism. And it kind of dies there because no one really gives a shit about it. Then we have the creation of functionalism. Functionalism is super popular. And then from functionalism, we have educational, evolutionary, and all these other different types. So under functionalism, we have Gestalt, which is looking at the whole. Now, as I'm covering this, this should all really make a lot of sense to you because we've been really talking about these ideas all year, which is why I'm thinking like you shouldn't have to write diligent notes or anything like that when I'm going over this stuff. It's just kind of a review. You should be highlighting things maybe on your focus, your study guide, or your outline that you don't really remember, but nothing crazy. 
So gestalt psychology is really when we talk about sensation and perception, looking at the sum of the parts is greater than the individual parts. Um, then we have psychoanalysis, which we've talked about 10,000 times, which is about Sigmund Freud and his looking at the unconscious, repression, all of these different types of things is another branch of psychology. Remember, psychoanalysis focuses only on Freud. Psychodynamic uh, is going to include other people. Then we have behaviorism. Behaviorism is the science of behavior that focuses on only observable behavior. That is founded by, of course, John B. Watson. And Watson and Pavlov are going to be behaviorism. They don't care why the animals are doing it. They just care about what the animals are doing. And then, of course, we have Little Albert by John B. Watson, where we traumatize some children. Then we have our modern perspectives, which is psychodynamic. So we have our traditional ones, which are Dassault, psychoanalysis, behaviorism. Those are your three modern, uh, three basics. And then we have our modern perspectives, psychodynamic, which is a version of psychoanalytic that only focus uh, that includes other people. Then we have the behavioral perspective, which is going to have B. F. Skinner really come in. And then we have the humanistic, which is a Maslow and Carl Rogers saying that humans are more than our evolutionary background and self-actualization, all of those different types of components. This should sound familiar. None of this is new. This is week one content, but it should be easier to cover. We have the cognitive perspective, which looks at memory and intelligence. And then we have the social cultural or the social aspects of perspectives. Uh, biopsychological, which is looking at human behavior and genetics. And then we have the evolutionary, which says we are all essentially animals and all we care about is food, sex, water. So when we talk about psychology, we also have to talk about the people who are in it. Um, so psychiatrists are medical doctors who specialize in diagnosed treatment of psychological disorders. These are doctors. These are doctors, so that means they go to medical school, okay? So to become a psychiatrist, you are a doctor and you go to medical school. Um, so a psychoanalyst, they're a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Now keep in mind, the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist is that a psychiatrist, you have to be a doctor and you have to go to medical school. Uh, a psychologist, you can do this with a four-year degree, four-year degree, and they are not doctors, but some are. So some do go to medical school and become psychologists, MD, um, and they are able to do uh, drugs and surgery and stuff like that. But most of your psychologists are not doctors. Like 99% of them are not doctors, and they're the ones who are doing counseling, teaching, and research. But there are very few psychologists, MD, who are both psychologists and doctors. So make sure you know that distinction. If you're a psychiatrist, you absolutely are a doctor. If you're a psychologist, 99% of the time, you are not a doctor. You have a four-year degree and you do counseling. A psychoanalyst, they're the people who study psychoanalysis. They have a special special training of seven years before the title. So they have a, uh, they have more advanced training than most people in the, uh, in the realm of psychoanalysis. So that's what makes psychoanalysis special. Psychiatric social workers are social workers who train in therapy, uh, who focus on environmental conditions, mental disorders, poverty, overcrowding, stress, and drug abuse. And then we already talked about psychologists. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the big stuff from all the stuff that you really need to be familiar with for history and approaches. Uh, not tough and stuff we've had embedded throughout so many other things. If you look at your focus, your study guide, and your outline from week one, all that information is there and was covered, and um, not a unit I would totally sweat, which is why we're going to do it in about four minutes. So, <laughs> everyone okay? 
So in order to be prepared for tomorrow's instruction in every Zoom meeting going forward is I would have that content from that week available to you. So this week we're covering content from week one. Um, we're covering content from, let me show you. Uh, from week one, two, three, four, and five. So I would have available to you con the focus study guide and outlines from week one, two, three, four, and five, especially tomorrow, but really important on Monday because biology is dense with content. And I'm going to try to go through it as fast as possible. But as you can see, um, we're going to have uh, very focused on what we're covering that day. And then on Tuesday, I'll cover whatever you have questions on. And then on Friday, on Wednesday, I mean, you have um, your Barron's book is due and you have a test. So there's no instruction. There's no Zoom video. Um, I, uh, maybe I'll do like a five minute one just to make sure everyone understands the test. Uh, another demo on the test, but that's about it. But going forward, I won't have one. And there you go. So hopefully we feel pretty comfortable with what's happening and I am officially good to go. So Baron's book, everyone should be working on it. That's your homework. That's your homework and to take vocab quizzes. That's it. Yes, ma'am. So none of all of this is being recorded and put on plant lectures. So you don't have to be here. You won't get to ask. Yeah, no one is required to be at these Zoom meetings. I'm simply hosting Zoom meetings so you can ask me questions as we get going. All of my meetings are being recorded and posted on Plant Lecture, so you can go back and watch them. So I know you guys have a lot going on, and I thought that would be the easiest, which is why my deadlines are between, you know, midnight to midnight and 24 hours long and stuff like that. So... Uh, I'm recording all of my meetings so you can ex access, them, access them whenever you have the time because there's a lot of things going on and your houses are very busy with everyone home <laughs> using internet and stuff like that. So, um, But yeah, no one is required to be here. Uh, you do you, but I am posting plant lectures and I would absolutely keep watching them because there's tons of information, especially as we go forward. Does that help, Olivia? So I'm not taking attendance. You do you. You have a pretty much daily quiz and you have a test every Wednesday and you need to be turning in your Barron's book. That's how this is going to go going forward. Everyone okay? All right, guys. I appreciate you being here. It was nice seeing your faces and um, have a great day. Bye.